and welcome to another exciting tutorial how to integrate Parse and Sashido using the Dependency Management Manager Cartage. Let's go really quickly through the steps of installing Cartage to your machine if you haven't done it already. So you can see here also states how you can do that and we're going to use homebrew approach which is pretty simple as soon as you have homebrew installed. So all you need to do is check out the homebrew website and copy and paste this line of code onto your terminal. I already did that so I will skip that step and next go back to Cartage GitHub page and copy and paste this line of code onto your terminal. I'm skipping this step as well. Now you're ready to start with parse integration. Go to parse documentation and locate the GitHub integration. Copy this line, open your text editor and then click on command shift and t to convert that into plain text and the next thing you need to do is save it save that on the desktop call it card file make sure to um, and check this extension that is provided and also make sure to name it card file this is really important save it to your desktop now go to your desktop create a new folder name it parse get the card file and insert it into your newly created folder i'm going to open my terminal and I'm going to switch to the newly created folder. The next thing that you need to do is type the command cartridge update. It takes time, some time to fetch all the dependencies and download all the data needed. We are already done with the process. Next, what we need to do is we have to create a new Xcode project. Name it as you wish. And what I like to do is I like to go to the parse folder and now you can see that there's another folder created from Carthage. I'll go to Carthage section, go section and iOS. Here you can find the frameworks that have been downloaded from Carthage for you. Now I'm going to go back to the Carthage folder, copy it onto my newly created export project. It's pretty good. Now let's go again into the cartridge folder, build iOS and locate those frameworks, select them and go to your general tab on Xcode, scroll down to embedded binaries, drag and drop them, make sure to select copy items if needed and create groups. Press on finish. And we're done. View the application to make sure there's no errors. Next, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to Sashiro website and click on Go to Dashboard. I'm going to create a new app. Give it a name. Choose your region. You can leave the app icon blank. It's optional and click on create. It takes a few minutes to build your first application on Sashiro, so I'm going to pause the video and resume after it's done. After the application has been created for you, you'll be presented with a block of code that includes the unique application ID, the client ID, and the server, server URL. You can copy and paste it onto your app delegate. Did finish launching with options method. Before that, you have to import the parse framework. Build it and make sure that there's no error. You can click on this and fix the syntax and build again. It looks that you have successfully linked to Parse and Sashiro using Carter. Now let's test it out and write some functions to see if we truly have linked to Sashiro. I have created two functions. One of them writes data to our Sashiro application, and the other one it's making a query to the same table trying to retrieve the data I just wrote. If you go to parse documentation, you can find a very well organized documentation and lots of examples and tutorials. So let's test it out. I'm going to click on write to table and if you see this error, don't worry about it. This happens, it takes some time to link the application to the Sushiro. As you can see, now everything looks fine and it says success. I go to Sushiro table. What I'm going to see, there's only one class user that is by default created from Sushiro. If I'm going to reload it, I'm supposed to see the new class game score that I just created and inserted a new row with all this data. Now let's go back to Xcode and try to retrieve the data we just wrote to this table game score. As you can see, I have successfully retrieve the data that I just wrote to the new game score table. And this is for today. I hope you enjoyed the video.